Now, while many of us are enjoying our work from home arrangements because it affords us flexibility in our schedule, it also leaves people feeling lethargic, accompanied by little to no exercise, causing weight gain. Now, this dilemma has made many seek refuge in all sorts of fad diets, from slimming tea to even plastic surgery. Health and lifestyle entrepreneur Elizabeth Onyema will be speaking to this and some of the most popular food myths. Elizabeth, good to have you join us on The Morning Show. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Now, um, hi, hi. <laughs> well, there are so many fad diets, you know. Um, first, there was um, keto. There's so many that I can't keep up with because, frankly, I do know such um, diets. Um, keto, but, the 800, oh, mad. <laughs> but what, there are a number of them. Yeah. But what is the best, you know, diet plan? So the best diet plan for anybody should actually be a nutrient-dense diet plan. Mm. By nutrient-dense diet plan, what I mean is you're eating, you're not just eating because um, your primary goal is to lose weight. Let's not forget here that when it comes to weight loss, there are particular things you could do to actually bring harm to yourself. So you don't want to lose weight and then become diabetic along the line or have high cholesterol issues or have one particular issue or the other. Rather, you want to lose weight and be healthier. And so the best way for you to tackle this situation is to focus on nutrients, nutrient-dense foods. Any diet that you're going to do that would involve you eliminating a particular macronutrient. And when I mean a macronutrient, I mean we have three major macronutrients, healthy carbs, we have carbs, we have protein, we have fat and oil. Now we also have the healthiest versions of this macronutrient. And so any diet that would involve you, that would tell you stuff like, hey, um, don't eat your fats, avoid eating protein, stay away from carbohydrate, is something that you have to be really, really, really scared about. That is one. Another thing I would say again is to also clearly avoid diets that involve you opening stuff from a sachet. Like, I mean, why do you have to open food from a sachet? Like, I mean, like, open all those kind of shakes. Do you know what's inside? You don't know what's there. This thing was made in a laboratory or some manufacturing company and it's packed for you and they're telling you it, it, it's good for you. How do you know? Mm. So when you don't know the contents in a food and if there are particular substances in that food that can be counterproductive to your health, then it's not a wise idea. Agreed. You know? Agreed. Yes, it's not a wise idea. You really. know, talking about wise choices, traditional Nigerian food, you know, it can be healthy. You've got spinach, okra, and other green vegetables that play a key role in a lot of the meals that we eat. Sadly, it's usually the accompaniments that make Nigerian meals or the overall meal unhealthy. So what would be the best way to strike a happy medium? You want food that tastes nice, is wholesome, but still, you know, filling. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm still saying the same thing. Nigeria is rich and has abundant, wonderful food available for ex to, to any Nigerian. I mean, all around the world, they are good food. The most important thing is to focus on natural foods, homemade foods. Make them yourself. Because when you make them yourself, you can be very certain that you're paying attention to using, like I said, nutrient-dense things or nutrient-dense foods to make your meal. Having compared, uh, as in comparing yourself to having to buy your food from a person who's not really interested in your kidney or your blood sugar levels or, you know, basically more paying more attention to making money, you know? So, yes, have you ever heard anybody starting a business for the sole aim of just being nice? Everybody does it for the sole aim of making money. So, if I have to use, like, maybe three or five um, different types of um, uh, 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 um, chicken bouillon in my food to make you come to me, I will do that. But when I'm making it at home myself, I wouldn't think of adding sugar into the yam I'm cooking. So there is, there is really nothing wrong with the Nigerian diet. I would say it over and over again. If there is something that we Nigerians are lucky to have, we have food that are not genetically modified. We have foods that are healthy 
like I said, new trend dance and are affordable for everybody. You just need to open yourself to these meals and then make them in a healthy way. Like I said, when you're making a proper meal, making a balanced diet for yourself, you must incorporate these three major macronutrients. A healthy carb, a healthy protein, and a healthy fat and oil. Try to avoid foods in cans. Try to avoid canned foods. Try to avoid foods that come in packs. And rather, go into the local market to go shopping. Mm. You know? This is the only way for you to be able to, to, to guard yourself from taking into your body substances that are found in food that are dangerous. Okay. I mean... Okay. So no. I'll pick up from there. You said okay. um, we should try and get um, affordable meals. But um, food is expensive now in the country, especially as the inflation has skyrocketed. Um, so what is the best, um, sh or what's the shortcut, you know, for people so we don't have to break a bank to be able to eat healthy? Well, when you talk about the shortcut, despite the fact that we are talking about eating healthy and breaking the bank. You must also remember that prevention is actually better than cure. And that paying attention to your health, every single thing we are today and would ever aspire to be, depends on this body that we carry. So I don't, when people tell me stuff like, hey, budget, budget, I mean, you don't have to eat snail when you can have regular Titus fish, popularly called in Nigeria, macro fish, you know? You don't even have to eat mackerel fish when we have a cheaper version such as hake fish or even shower that is really healthy. Shower is herring in English, you know? Healthy, good foods. You get what I'm trying to say? So you, there, are, there, are, there are cheaper options to these, very, to these various macronutrients I'm talking about. I mean, instead of you having to do a, 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 um, go for some some packaged foods what's there in eating yam how much are eggs eggs are not pricey how much is the regular spinach and Yams ugo we have in the market now. really affordable <laughs> so yeah so making yourself a plate of boiled yam or even boiled sweet potatoes what am i even talking about yam mm -hmm. sweet potato is way affordable i mean with 500 naira alone you're buying at least five or six really big sweet potatoes and you can use it to make a meal Hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? So you really don't have to break the bank. Foods like beans, very affordable. You know, foods like plantain, super affordable. Plantain? So what are we talking about here? Plantain is no longer affordable. You know plantain. No, no, it's, it's not, <laughs> plantain is a luxury good in the it's UK, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and here in Nigeria too now. Yeah. <laughs> If we no, no, no. The truth about it is yes. that food generally is pricey. If you're going to talk about the healthy foods being pricey, talk about the processed foods as well. Are they not pricey? How much is a regular carton of noodles, for instance? It's not cheap. You understand? Yeah. But at this point in time, what you're faced with is buying a little pricey healthy food as against buying a, a, a health... Um, a, um, an, an, um, a processed, you know, unhealthy food that is equally as pricey. Mm. What you should be thinking about is your body functioning properly, taking in the right nutrients. Even if you're trying to lose weight, you don't have to, I repeat, you don't have to remove a macronutrient from your diet or have to break the bank to get there. Understood. These are regular Nigerian diets, regular foods exposed to a regular Nigerian that we grow up eating. We grew up eating. So what's the excuse, really? There well, isn't, if you ask me. If we look at usual family dynamics, there's, I, I mean, let me not, you know, speak about, you know, gender roles because it, men and women can cook in a household. Yeah. But if we look at the person who usually cooks the most meals, whether it's, uh, you know, a mother or a father, an older sibling or not, what is the best way do you think for the person who creates the meals in the household to, for, you know, incorporate healthy foods into the family's diet? Because no. usually if someone's dieting, oh, okay, I have to like, you know, exactly. make, make my lafu and my yourself. abula on the side uh -huh. here and then, you know, have a restricted meal for myself. But for the family as a whole, how can somebody incorporate a healthier lifestyle for everybody to enjoy? Okay, so good. I like this question. It's a very beautiful question. Like I would normally tell my clients, I personally... I do not cook a different pot 
Like, I don't make a different meal from that which every other person in my household is going to eat. I eat, we eat the same things. I may not eat three times a day. I may just eat maybe twice or one heavy meal a day, you know, but that particular meal I'm eating is something that my family can enjoy with me as well. So the best kind of diet for anybody to go on is one that actually carries everybody along. And it's also important for a weight watcher to realize that she must make her family realize that or his family or her family realize that they have a goal that they must attain. Because if your family is eating something else, maybe they are busy doing a lot of sodas and all that, and they bring these things into the house, and you are a weight watcher trying to lose weight, obviously, you're, it's going to be counterproductive to your success. Because it will take only the Holy Spirit to actually stop you from eating these very things that wouldn't let you get to your goal weight. So the best way for you to even go into any diet at all, or what I love to actually call a lifestyle, is to carry your family along. I mean, you're buying watermelons for yourself and you're making smoothies for yourself. Are you trying to say that your kids and your husband do not deserve smoothies as well? How, should I say selfish, can you be? Do you understand? You're taking in loads of nutrients. They can take these things. You know, one of the problems that we have in the world today is that mothers or fathers teach their children to eat in a particular way, especially giving them a very unhealthy diet, exposing them to an unhealthy lifestyle, and they're doing something else. And they're forgetting that weight gain is a symptom. It's people tend to look at weight gain like, hey, na fat, na fat, I no kill person. That's wrong. Hey. Weight gain is a symptom. It is similar to having Absolutely. headache when you may have malaria mm. or joint pains. Your body is yes. passing a message across to you. It is telling you you're doing something wrong. Fix it. Okay. If you do not fix it, then other diseases connected to diet and lifestyle will set in. I'm happy you said that actually because I wanted to ask yeah. you in terms of your uh, you know experience what you think plays the biggest role in obesity is it genetics or is it food choices because like you said many people just think well you know maybe I'm big boned or naturally inclined to be bigger but what is the biggest you know I have heard I have heard people tell me forever we are naturally fat in my family I grew up as a fat child I got married bigger than this and here I am after three kids my slimmest ever and eating pounded yam and across soup when I want to. Do you get what I'm trying to say? People tend to just believe that it's about genetics. I agree we have the issue of genetics. I agree that when it comes to other diet and lifestyle issues such as diabetes, high blood pressure and the rest of them, yes, your dad or mom may have it or it may actually be something that, you know, is common in your family. But the greatest, greatest, the one thing that everybody has to be mindful about when it comes to living a healthy life is actually what you put into your mouth. It is just what you put into your mouth. Like the food is extremely important. I, for instance, now may have, I, I come from a family where obviously some of my, my, my relations have diabetes and the rest of them. I was pre-diabetic at my heaviest, but I'm not right now. What has changed? My food. I'm not eating like I was eating before. Now, I'm eating differently, obviously, because I'm informed, you know? And then I now love to move my body. People tend to think that, in fact, people just, people, when I hear people tell me stuff like, hey, um, Liz, I'm already really skinny and I don't need to, to, to work out. I just get all riled up. Like, do you really think that exercising alone is just about weight loss? Elizabeth, well, I'll leave you to answer that question when we come back from this very short break. It is time for us to take a very short break. But as I said, once we come back, we will join Elizabeth Onyama, who is a lifestyle and health the food entrepreneur. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still talking health and lifestyle and healthy foods and the best ways to lose weight with entrepreneur Elizabeth Onyama. Elizabeth, before we went on break there, I know that you're in the middle of your point. I'll give you the floor to land on your point. And thereafter, I'd like to ask you uh, to tell us about the journey you went through uh, when you created Hearty Foodie and Lizzie Weight Watchers. Go ahead. Okay, so before we went on the break, I was talking about the benefits of exercise. And I would say it over again that it's not only 
only fat people that need to work out. Every living being should exercise. There is a reason why we're born with only two, with two legs to move up from point A to point B. But given how busy our lives are these days with the coming of technology and our cars, people have just relaxed. Nobody sees the need to move their bodies any longer. And now there's just this stereotype, this belief that only fat people should exercise. Please, if you're listening to this right now, I need you to break yourself from this belief. There are so many reasons why you should exercise. Exercise distresses you. It is therapeutic. It gets your heart pumping. It gets you taking, in fact, it expands your lungs' capacity to accept oxygen. It lowers your blood pressure, lowers your blood sugar levels, brings down bad cholesterol, makes you sleep well. I mean, why shouldn't any live human being exercise? It is painful. So yes, one of the benefits we get from exercise is weight loss or maintaining a healthy weight or one of the things i would say as well getting rid of abdominal fat as well so every living being whether you're skinny or fat work out and just in case you're listening out there yeah. there are people we call toffees thin outside fat inside when you look at them on the outside they are thin but on the inside of their bodies their organs are packing fats so what do you say about such people? The fact that their outer body or their capacity to carry what we call subcutaneous fat, which is the fat that we can hold in our hands, is limited. But their capacity to carry visceral fat, the fat that grows on the inside, the dangerous fat that causes all sorts of health challenges, is high. So you see them on the outside, they look skinny and you envy them because they can guzzle all the processed foods there is in the world with still fitting into a size 6. Yet, they're in trouble, you know? So exercise is important. Going for more natural food, instead of doing the regular peanut butter, eat granite, buy the regular granite. You don't need to buy the peanut butter that has other substances inside that can be harmful to you. Go natural. That is the, like, the message. You have to go natural. Now, talking about my desire, how I started this entire journey, I'd always been an overweight child. I was... I was the chubbiest amongst my siblings growing up who were five and I was the middle child and or I am the middle child and I had always in fact I remember clearly when I was growing up having issues with my sister and she was really toss it at me you know you fatty bum bum and all that so I grew up with a complex about my body I just didn't understand why I couldn't be skinny like my siblings and so I started starving myself when I was eight or seven years, about eight years old, I stopped eating. My mom would give me food and I'll pack my food and give it to the dogs and they never knew until I came down with ulcer. So I dealt with ulcer for most of my adult life. And then by the time I got married, the kids, I mean, I got married, not even skinny at all, already in my 80s. And so by the time the children started coming, the weight started packing. I was telling myself initially that, okay, it is children, it is the CS operation I did. I kept giving myself excuses. But I would go to church and I would go out and I would see mothers looking really good with their children and then to make matters worse i started having health challenges and every time i go to the hospital the doctor looks at me smiles and says hey madam you have to lose weight if you lose weight the pre-diabetic situation is going to you know you're, you're going to keep it in control um the sleep apnea situation you're going to keep it in control and i just kept i just had so many questions in my head and then you go to the internet and you're seeing so many things this person is saying it's right cold this one says don't eat rice at all this one says goes for brown like everywhere just information everywhere i said i said no i'm not going to be i'm not going to do this to myself i have to find a solution to my problem and that was when i had to go back to school studied and then finish now i was going to school not for anybody i was going for myself but by the time i was done I was infuriated, I was angry. Like, people do not need to die because they have one health challenge connected to diet and lifestyle. People do not need to live in a body that they do not enjoy. You do not need to feel that because you're a mother and you have five kids and five of them, that's CS, you should be stuck in a body that is constantly tied in a cincture and like knocking yourself out of breath every day. No, you know? and. 
the entire hearty foodie thing, the least weight watchers thing, everything is just about making people understand that you can make the most of what you have available around you. And that is why working with Caucasians, working with blacks all over the world hasn't been an issue. All I just need to know are the foods you are exposed to and the healthiest of them all mm. and then a meal plan can be created for you and you can get to your goal with easily without stress there are a whole lot of things going on out there that mm. if only people could just change the way they eat and focus on new trends i'm going to say it again mm -hmm. the entire idea behind eating a pineapple or eating a mango is not because it's sweet and it's not necessarily because of the energy you feel when you eat them it is because of that unseen thing that life-giving force that dwells inside that food that propels the human body when you eat a food rich in vitamin a your body doesn't question it your body understands it as soon as you're taking it your body is breaking it down moving it to your eyes and other parts of your body that requires this vitamin like i remember clearly during the covid season i'll go shopping and then I would see some people, you know, we were made to shop, like buy stuff, you know. So that also contributed to people getting fat because they were buying all sorts of things into their homes there and then nothing else really to do. do. <laughs> Couldn't go anywhere. There was know? nothing else to do. Do you understand? So they were just buying all sorts of things and practically changing their food environment. Mm. And you hear people now, then you go to the pharmacy, see people purchasing vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin. And in my head, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, oh. Can I just talk to this person? Why? All these supplements that you're buying and trying to chase COVID away are things you can get from food. Do you know the amount of vitamin C we have in yam and sweet potatoes alone? It almost beats that you can get from an orange. But they then, say that as we grow older, our bodies are not able to absorb all these nutrients from the food we eat. And so we do require um, supplements. I'm going to so disagree with you. The human body, the human body would any day, at any time, understand new trends. It would understand it. Listen, the word supplement, mm -hmm. supplement. What when you think about the word supplement? What comes to mind? To make up, to cover up, to add, to contribute, isn't it? Yeah. That's supplement. So when you're buying the supplement, you're supposed to be buying it to add to what you have already. So if you do not have such already, then it has, it's of no use. And the only place you can get these, these basic nutrients needed for your body before the supplement can supplement what you already have is to eat good healthy foods, mm -hmm. nutrient dense foods. A lot of people are suffering and are lacking nutrition. It's a case of undernutrition, not malnutrition yeah. now. I mean, you've spoken Under so much. Undernutrition. You've spoken so but, much. Yes, you've spoken so much about your personal weight loss journey. Yes. And, you know, when you have the experience of being overweight and then losing that weight, it is it is a unique type of thing. First of all, it's an achievement, so congratulations to Thank that. You. Thank but, you. you know, for one of the things that keep people, I think, from reaching that goal weight that they may have is, you know, a fear of, like, a restrictive diet or, you know, how's the food? going to taste and seasoning also plays a big role in that however as you may well be aware you know seasonings can be very high in salt and as a result unhealthy so what are some healthier uh, seasoning alternatives that you used in your journey that you could recommend to others okay, now for instance i i came across and now this happens when you tend to work with people from different parts of the world i heard about this very interesting spice called garam masala honestly garam masala is an indian spice made from all types of interesting spice you can think about cardamom cumin turmeric curry nutmeg and it's really tasty so there are times that i actually make my meals with garam masala and good thing tiger now has a particular version of garam masala called curry masala and it's available in the market out there now talking about sodium sodium doesn't just exist in the msg you eat alone there is sodium in your salad cream. There is sodium in your processed food. <laughs> there is sodium everywhere. Just like we have hidden sugar as well. There is sugar in your drugs. There are some medications you have, some supplements you have that have different types of sugar. 
and you're taking this supplement and you're telling yourself, hey, I don't know why I'm not losing weight. I've cut sugar, I've removed salt from my diet, I've removed this and that. But the medication you're taking, that vitamin C you're popping, has dextrose, has sucralose, has maltose, has high fructose corn syrup, and all types of sugar. Sugar alone has more than 200 hidden names in your medication. And that alone can actually truncate your weight loss journey. Let me tell you a very quick story. Now, about three days ago, there's this particular client I have in the UK that I was work I'm working with presently, and she's been doing everything I asked her to. But for some funny reasons, for like five days, she wasn't dropping. Normally, when I work with someone, you should actually notice a progressive, you know, like difference every day in your skill report. But like five days, nothing was moving. And I called her and said, what's going on? What are you taking? What are you eating? Initially, she went on the defensive. Elizabeth, I'm doing everything you asked me to do. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going according to book. I said, no, there is something you're taking and we need to fish it out. If not, it is going to affect your weight loss journey. Mm -hmm. And so I began to ask her questions. Then I said, do you take supplements? And she was like, oh, yes, I just got this particular supplement called, I don't know if I'm supposed to call the name right now, but I, I, I just, you know, I, it's five days ago. I said, send me that supplement, send me the ingredients, take a picture of the ingredients, take a picture of the nutritional information. I need to look at it. And then lo and behold, when she took a picture of this thing, I almost passed out. Why? Because the number and different types of sugar that was in this so-called supplement that was meant to make her healthy was just alarming. Mm. And as soon as she stopped that supplement, doing the same thing, eating as much as 1,600 calories a day and going on her regular one-hour walk and staying as active as possible, she started losing again. Okay, so that's where we're going to have to um, take the byline now. Eating very healthy and a lot of benefits for exercising. Elizabeth and Yema, health and lifestyle entrepreneur, would like to thank you for joining us on thank the morning you so show. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.